Welcome back to the workshop. Today I'll be showing you how to add an arrow shelf to your bow. I'll be using a wine cork, but you can also use stacked leather, stacked cork, or any other corky material, such as these shelf fungi. The live music in this video comes from my awesome cousin in Uruguay, Marcos Topolansky Quintero. You can hear more of his work on iTunes and Spotify. Now, I don't personally add arrow shells to my own bows, so why am I even making this video? Well, it's to stop you from cutting out an arrow shelf on a self bow, if you're planning on doing that. Adding on an arrow shelf is a much more traditional and much safer alternative. Poorly cut out arrow rests are one of the most common points of failure on beginner made bows, and I strongly recommend against them unless you're doing it for a very technical reason, such as flight archery. So the natural alternative is to shoot off of your hand, as was done traditionally, but that's not for everyone. Shooting off of a shelf can protect you from scratches and dings while you shoot. If that's something you want to avoid, then shooting off of a shelf is a great idea. I'm just trying to encourage you to add on your shelf, rather than cutting it out. You can add on an arrow shelf without radically changing a traditional design. If you want to cut out your arrow shelf, you'll have to build your handle entirely differently from the beginning, and you won't be able to follow tutorials that don't have a cutout arrow shelf. I'm going to start off by shaping the cork into a tapered wedge. If you don't have a thicker piece of cork like this, you can laminate thinner pieces or layers of leather into a bigger chunk. Now that we have a wedge shape cut out, we could just glue the cork to the bow, but if we slightly hollow out the mating surface so that it's concave, we'll get a slightly better glue up. Now I'll be cutting out the side profile of the arrow shelf, but you could also do this while it's on the bow. Counterintuitively, you don't want a flat arrow shelf, because you'll get more erratic arrow contact. If you go for a pigeon-breasted shape so that the apex is towards the back of the bow, or in the direction of the arrow flight, then you'll get much more consistent arrow behavior. What you really want to avoid is having corners, like on a flat shelf, because if you hit a corner, that will wildly influence your arrow flight. With the pigeon-breasted shape, if the arrow does make contact with the shelf when you're shooting, it's only likely to happen at that apex, so the results will be a little bit more consistent. On the other hand, with a flat shelf, the arrow could hit anywhere on that shelf, and as a result, you'll get more erratic arrow flight. Of course, it's obviously best to tune your arrows so that you're not getting any arrow shelf contact at all, but if you do have an arrow shelf, you only want to be supporting the arrow by one prominent point. That way, you only have one point to avoid hitting. Here I'm just using a little super glue to glue on the cork. I put a little bit of activator on the wood so that it would work faster. From this point on, putting on a leather handle will be just like any other bow. I won't go through every last detail today, but if you do want to see that, check out my leather handle tutorial.
I'm using a fairly thin leather here so that we have an easy time molding it around the aero shelf. This is vegetable tan leather, but you don't need to use that if you don't plan on tooling the leather. I like veg tan leather because it tools well and also gives me maximum control over the staining and dyeing process. A 4x4 inch square of leather usually works out perfectly for me. Next we're going to spray the leather with some water. This is going to do two things for me. First it'll make the leather flexible so that we can mold it around the handle and especially the arrow rest. The second thing it'll do is prepare the leather for tooling. Next wrap your leather as tightly as you can pull it around the handle and cinch off the excess with some binder clips. Let the handle set for a few minutes and then when you pull off the binder clips you'll have perfect dotted lines that you can cut to. Before we finish up, let's talk about some reasons why you may or may not want to put an arrow rest on your bow, and why I don't put them on mine. I think the best reason to add on an arrow shelf is as an alternative to cutting one out. If you're used to shooting with an arrow shelf, and you just need one, you should definitely add one on rather than cutting one out. As I mentioned before, cut out arrow shelves are an extremely common point of failure on beginner made bows. Not to mention that cut out arrow shelves are not very historical, and really look out of place on a self bow. If you don't care about historical authenticity, that's fine. The main reason that I don't shoot with an arrow shelf is because I just find them a little bit blocky and obstructive. I like a stick bow that just feels like it's part of your arm, and an arrow shelf spoils that illusion for me. From a historical perspective, I think arrow rests never really caught on because they're simply not necessary. If you have well-matched arrows, then you simply don't need to cut out arrow shelf to have perfect arrow flight. The arrow is going to bend around the handle anyway so it doesn't matter if your bow's center shot or not, unless your arrows are badly matched. But then you have other problems, it's not the shelf's fault. An added on arrow rest is the best of both worlds. You have the safety and comfort of a modern arrow rest, but you still maintain the look and feel of a traditional bow. Well, that's it for today. I hope I've inspired you to do whatever it is you want to do with your own bow. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, may the bow gods be with you, and may your arrows fly true.